Hey guys, it is Tyler here back once again with another video. Heading into 2020, I thought it was a great idea to talk about my most anticipated games of this year. Now last year was a little bit lackluster. Of course, yeah, Kingdom Hearts 3 come out, but that was very early in the year and it was few and far between then on. This year, there's a, a lot more games I'm excited about, uh, plus the next generation of consoles and plenty of games that are yet to be announced because of the next generation of consoles as well. So we're only going to be talking about games that we know are announced, confirmed and coming out with release dates in 2020. So that's what we're going to be talking about. I'm currently working on a big video project uh, right now and I thought I'd get it out this week but it's way bigger than I expected so it'll be next week. So I thought let's do this video where I talk about my top five most anticipated games of 2020. So let's go. So number five is Marvel's Avengers. Now I know there's a lot of hate, I guess you could say, towards this game just based on the trailers and the demos. And don't get me wrong, it doesn't look amazing like I wanted it to just from watching the demos. But I want to give it a chance because I love Marvel and I love the Avengers and I want to see where this game goes. And I'm hoping that it's better than it looks. I've seen some people that have played it and they've said that, you know... It's got issues, for sure, and has a lot to work on. I'm hoping the delay can fix those things. I'm hoping the story is strong, and I hope that we can continue to build some sort of, perhaps, Marvel video game universe. I know there's not a connection known to Insomniac's Spider-Man game, but perhaps in the future there can be some times. I don't know, but I'd like to see more of this, and I'd like it to succeed. I want it to succeed, is what I'm saying. And I love the idea of playing as all these different Avengers. I love the idea of co-op play with the Avengers, uh, specific story mission for each one, group missions, and hopefully the story is strong and can continue on and, and build on a second game or third or who, who knows where it could go, but there's just so much potential with how big Marvel is right now, and I really am hoping that this Avengers game succeeds, even though it's looking at this point unlikely, but we'll see what happens. That's why it's number five and not higher on the list. Anyway, coming in at number four is Cyberpunk 2077. Now, for a lot of people, this is their number one most anticipated game. And honestly, this wasn't even in my top five until very recently. I've never played a CD Projekt Red game until I started playing Witcher 3 only a couple of weeks ago, and I've absolutely loved my time so far playing The Witcher 3. I've spent some time recently in the last week or so actually watching some Cyberpunk 2077 demos, some explanation videos on how the game works and runs, some of those deep dive videos that CD Projekt Red have made, and this game looks fantastic. The graphics obviously amazing, the mechanics and the RPG elements look amazing. I'm not a huge futuristic, I guess the, I guess in terms of the setting, I'm not a big into like futuristic games as much as I'm in a fantasy game, so if I was to argue what would I rather, a Witcher game or a Cyberpunk game, it would be The Witcher just based on the fact that it's a fantasy game. The same way I feel about Bethesda when they make Fallout or an Elder Scrolls. I'd any day of the week pick an Elder Scrolls because I much prefer a fantasy RPG to a future post-apocalypse RPG. Not that this is post-apocalypse, just in terms of the Fallout example. But don't get me wrong, these games are amazing still, and this one looks amazing. Cyberpunk 2077 looks like a massive step up and could be the future of the way RPGs are run, like definitely has plenty of traits we're used to, but who knows what sort of elements it's going to add. It's those little things that make the difference between a great game and an amazing game, and I want to see what CD Projekt Red have in store for Cyberpunk with this game in terms of those little things that can push the RPG genre forward, because in some ways it is growing stale, but it was The Witcher 3 that pushed it forward last time, and I'd like to think that they can do it again with Cyberpunk 2077. Only time will tell. Coming in... At number three is Ghost of Tsushima. Now, Ghost of Tsushima, a PlayStation 4 exclusive. Sony have killed it with this generation. There's, there's no two ways about it. I'm an Xbox guy. I've always been an Xbox guy. And the reality is, I can't argue. PlayStation 4 has murdered the Xbox One this generation. No dispute. Not going to get an argument from me. Not a complaint. I just hope it pushes Xbox forward. But once again, here's another first party game that Sony's coming out with that looks absolutely incredible. To see a third person action adventure story driven game set in Japan playing as a samurai like this is what people have been asking games like Assassin's Creed for for so long 
and I'm so glad a game like Ghost of Tsushima exists. The story, the graphics, everything looks incredible about this, the way they've seemed to build the world. There's so much to this game from the small amount we've seen from it, and I'm loving every bit of it. I love the atmosphere. I'm loving the music. I'm loving the art direction. I'm loving the gameplay. There's so much about this that I love from these demos. And we haven't seen too much as well. Where I argue something like Cyberpunk 2077, sure, there's probably more to the game, but we've seen so much of that already. Ghost of Tsushima, I feel like uh, you've, we've barely scratched the surface of what this game is really about and how we're going to experience this game. I'd like to think once again, perhaps it'll push this genre forward. I don't know. Only time will tell once again. But Ghost of Tsushima is certainly on this top five list, and that's why it's number three. At number two is The Last of Us Part Two. Now, The Last of Us Part One, I was late to the game with. Again, I'm an Xbox guy. I didn't have a PlayStation 3. I didn't play The Last of Us on PlayStation 3. I didn't play the Uncharted trilogy on PlayStation 3. I got a PlayStation 4 a year or two after the PlayStation 4 released. I played all the Uncharted games. Incredible. One of my favorite franchises now. And then I played The Last of Us. Now, at that point, it was a few years old, and the hype around the game, right? People saying it's one of the greatest games of all time. I played it. Now, I hate zombie games, I should add. I absolutely hate zombie games. I hate zombie movies. I hate zombie shows. Everything about it, I hate zombies. Boring, uninteresting. Now, for the fact that The Last of Us is a zombie game, and people tried to tell me it wasn't, but then I played it, I'm like, yeah, it's a zombie game. It's the best zombie game I've ever played. And the story and characters are amazing. And I loved it. And I love The Last of Us. Is it the greatest game of all time? Absolutely not. Is it my favorite Naughty Dog game? Absolutely not. But I still enjoyed it. But again, played it late. Played it after Uncharted 4, which was obviously a much progressed terms of technology game. And again, the genre of Uncharted, I just prefer to a genre of a zombie game. But The Last of Us Part 2 is taking all those things that Uncharted 4 had, those third-person, linear, storied, driven elements that that game pushed forward and pushing it forward even more with The Last of Us Part 2. There's so much realism to this game that we've seen already. There is... I, I can't tell you how excited I am to continue the story of Ellie and Joel, to build more characters in this world, to really explore the human side of of this world, it's what was so good about the first game, and years on, with this story, with seeing where Ellie is now, and then adding in that gameplay to it, I've never seen a game like this, this is such a step up from the first Last of Us game, and I'm just very hopeful that this will blow me out of the water, and be the experience that the Last of Us one probably wasn't for me compared to so many of you out there that it's one of your favorite games of all time. It isn't mine, but I do I like the game a lot? Absolutely I do. Am I very excited for Last of Us Part 2? Absolutely. fucking lootly I cannot wait for this game. Again, another Sony exclusive to wrap up this generation. The Last of Us Part 2. I can't wait to see where these characters go in the story. I can't wait to see how the game plays and the realism elements to it and how deep does this game go in terms of realism. Absolutely cannot wait. Now, number one, you might have guessed it if you know me. Some of you are going to be mad about it, and I get it. Halo Infinite. I'm an Xbox guy. I've always been an Xbox guy. Halo is one of my favorite franchises of all time. For a long time, it was my favorite franchise of all time. Until the abortion that is Halo 5 Guardians came out, it was my favorite franchise of all time. And that game completely demolished all that love of Halo I had. All that hope I had. Now, Halo Infinite seems to be trying to fix the trajectory of Halo. We've got the old art style back. Music back. The most important thing, Master Chief, and Master Chief only, back in the main story. This is the Halo I've been waiting for. 343 and Microsoft have been patient about it. They didn't rush it out. They waited, and it's a perfect game to release with the new Xbox. Perfect game. Perfect, perfect, perfect game. You want to launch an Xbox, you have to have a Halo title, and this is the game to do it. They've waited five years since Halo 5 to release Halo Infinite. And I hope that time off to focus and really delve and build a game with a story that's strong 
with your focus character in the right place, with your franchise direction in the right place, and rebuilding Halo back to what it was and not what they tried to push it to be over the last couple of games and last few years. So I'm really... This, to me, is my most anticipated game for two reasons. Because, one, it's Halo and Master Chief. Yes. But the main reason actually is because it's Halo's last chance. It's anticipated because it means the most. It'll have the most impact. Sure, The Last of Us Subpunk. They're going to be great. And I know they're going to be great. That's why in terms of excitement, like, yeah, I'm excited to play them. But I'm not thinking about them. Because I'm like, it'll come. And I'll love it. Halo, I'm not thinking about because, oh my god, I can't wait. Yes, a bit of that. But I'm, I can't stop thinking about it because I'm scared. And the anticipation is real. This is top five most anticipated games. It doesn't mean it's the most excited. This is anticipation. This is excitement, fear, stress. All these things molded into one. And it's all riding on Halo Infinite. If Halo Infinite doesn't land and it is anything even remotely close to what Halo 5 was... Halo is dead, and Xbox whew, is in massive trouble going forward. And I guess I'll become a PlayStation guy. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. That's blasphemy for, me, blasphemy for me to say, but hey, it is what it is. So, ladies and gentlemen, let me know what your top five most anticipated games of 2020 are. That's mine. Hope you enjoyed it. Sure, there's plenty of other rumored games that are coming out this year. Supposedly, Horizon Zero Dawn 2 is launching with PlayStation 5. That's a rumor that's out there that I've heard. That would be number one, if that were true. But again, games aren't announced yet. We don't know anything about these next-gen consoles other than they exist and they're coming out at the end of the year and Halo Infinite's on the Xbox. That's all we know. There's so much left to know, so much to anticipate, but those are my top five right now. I'd like to hear yours and your thoughts. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you this Sunday for some podcasts. Oh, no, not Sunday, Monday now for the As Always podcast on James's channel and on Patreon for Cinema Room, a week's early access for our Oscar special episode, and I'll see you next week for another video. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you very soon for more content.